Day three is on the open sea, with land only viewable from the distance. It's up to the Volendam to keep us entertained, but that's not a problem, in most cases anyway. I'm going to try to stay out of those shops because I'm really bad. <laughs> Probably a good plan. Some of the jewelry on board will set you back thousands of dollars. Good thing there are plenty of other options that don't cost a penny. There's eating, a game of chess that puts players right in the action, grabbing something to eat, a ping pong championship, filling an empty stomach, swimming in the pool or soaking in the hot tub. And oh, by the way, did I mention eating? How about karaoke? Our holiday vacations tour director stole the show, but has no plans of leaving the day job. Finally, many guests cap off the night with a show in the auditorium. Hello, Alaska. Day four and the sea isn't so open anymore. The mountains move in closer as we travel north through the inside passage. We enjoy panoramic views as a well and sea otters escort us to our next destination. There it is, the largest state capital in the United States, geographically speaking anyway, and the first place we step foot on dry land in Alaska. There are lots of options and going our separate ways, the group experiences unique adventures. Bob David of Fruta boards a float plane and toured about five glaciers from a bird's eye view. He then lands at a remote lodge for dinner and more. They had a nice uh, salmon feast for us and uh, observed three bears that kind of hang around the lot simply because there's food there. Chuck and Barb Harvey stay on the water, boarding a smaller boat in search of whales. We saw lots of whales. There were a lot of them around. Two of them came right up next to the boat. It was pretty exciting. Gary and Carol Carter choose a helicopter to take in the sights from the sky. The glacier itself was blue, which doesn't, it looks really different when you're right up on top of it. And some just stay put, finding plenty to do in this fascinating city nestled in the mountains, accessible only by air and sea. Stopping by the shops and local restaurants is all some need to create lasting memories. I try my luck at the famous fishing the area is known for, heading to the North Channel with a local guide. How did that turn out? Well, let's just say, from the sound of it, photojournalist Todd Gilbert catches more than me, and he never even leaves dry ground. I'd run into te uh, Todd periodically, and uh, I didn't realize that a camera was such a chick magnet. Every time I was around him, uh, he had girls standing there, and uh, 